Welcome to the 2021 PPD webinar series for July. Um, this specific webinar is going to focus on customizing an imported sequence, and we're going to focus on tips to personalize the effects and to simplify the import process uh, to make it just a little easier for you to be able to jump in to uh, your layout. So a handful of you folks have been around for a few years already, so many of you may find this information uh, a good review. Uh, a few of you who are newer or may not know some of these concepts um, are going to hopefully learn a number of new things. And uh, I, I, I had a lot of fun going through this. This, this is actually going to be a much bigger uh, lesson until I realized how much information I needed to put into here. So uh, I, I kind of shrunk it down versus yesterday what I thought it was going to be and prepared it in such a manner that it would be a little easier for, for everybody to digest. And we can expand on it in the coming months in the next webinar. So uh, with that being said, our goals for this this week's for this webinar for this month is to show some effect editing, how to edit some effects. Um, and, and, what, and what I mean show editing of effects is taking them from one model or group of models and dispersing them throughout uh, a model group. Uh, and, and we do that by accessing individual models inside the groups. Uh, we'll also be editing, uh, show you how to edit the order of models that are inside your groups, as well as editing the order of your submodels that are inside your model, which isn't exactly um, uh, well known until I went through and I started doing some of this as, as a test. So uh, I, the, the goals really changed in this much more than I expected. And then the last thing I want to talk about is what we've created on the PPD website, which is the brand new PPD certified model download page and how that works with some of the things that uh, what we structured inside Xlights to, um, uh, to help the home user and to be able to quickly and easily do things whenever you're mapping your sequences. So with that be being said, we're going to get right into effect editing. And why would we want to or why should we edit any effects? Why should we change anything? So you as a homeowner, um, you have the control of programming. And what does that mean? Well, um, if you sequence your own show for yourself, it's very, it's, it can be very, very tedious. And what do I mean by tedious? Well, I mean spending hours just placing those effects in the exact right spot, giving it the right speed, fitting the tempo, fitting the color, making it appear to fit the music that's being played and and it's it's a very long and arduous process for somebody who doesn't know every little single detail now the downside of learning all these details is now you know all these details and this is where i'm at right now with my programming is i know all this stuff now how do i do it so that the standard everyday person who's going to sequence how do i do more than that. So that's my goal whenever I sequence. Your goal may be a little bit different. But, um, but what this does is allows you to take ownership of the sequence whenever you, let's say you um, map a sequence from the PPD sequence store, you, you've uh, downloaded your monthly sequence, or you're mapping something that somebody shared with you. Uh, let's, let's give you a way to let that individual prop stand out versus just having everything set into groups, which is so much what we're, we're very used to because group layouts are, are, are much easier to get into mapping. But how do you personalize it? And that's what we're going to get into. Um, why don't you just do this in the programming? I know somebody's going to ask this question, and it kind of popped into my head. Uh, the, the things that I'm going to show you inside the programming, uh, um, please understand that there is absolutely no way that any one sequencer it doesn't matter what store you buy it from, could ever absolutely know what props you are going to run in your display. There's far more of you than there are of me or us, the, the sequencing people in the community. And it makes it very challenging for us to devise programming to fit every single prop that we know of or that we don't know of that you're going to either create on your own or you know that's, that's a one-off, that's a very custom piece. So we... What we try to do is we try to make it so that we give you exactly what you need to make things look great. And hopefully after this webinar, you have a couple steps that you can take where you can do it on your own. 
one of the specific things I'll say also is, um, for example, we have s uh, eight mini trees on our on our um, pro layout and an original layout. Makes it nice, right? Well, what if you only have four and we sequence all eight at the individual model level? And, and you want to get all that programming in. Well, you can't get it all in because you only have four. And this is one of the reasons why we really don't go down to the model level very much, if ever. Because when we do, it gets very specific as to which ones you're going to put it on. And you, we don't want you to feel like you're missing something because, oh, there's eight trees and they're all doing something different. And, you know, you have like eight beats to the measure and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you've only got four, so you're getting one, two, three, four. Do you map the other four back onto that? You know, and we don't want you to feel like you're missing something else. So this is where you can take it from the level that we give you in a sequence or other sequencers or somebody who shares a sequence, you can bump it up the, to the next level. Uh, and obviously the biggest thing whenever sequencing is the time that you're going to invest into it. Um, I could sequence the crap out of anything, but and, and somebody will look at it and say, boy, it's really busy. But what you can do is you can take what looks really busy and you could invest your time into it to fit your layout a little better or fit your style a little better. The idea is that you're getting enough programming to fill in any any layout whatsoever. However, sometimes we know that people like it to be a little bit more dark and have a little more negative space. Remember, you can always delete effects. You can always use the off effect. So it's it, this is one of the reasons why we edit the sequence after we've brought it into our layout. Some people, it's, it's I like what you do, I'm just gonna map it and, and off and away you go and you're happy. But for those of you who always are, are a little bit like, I really like it to do this. Well, if you invest the time into doing it, there's no way that we're gonna know uh, that you like that or you don't like it, um, unless you tell us, obviously. But uh, with that being said, there's two methods we're going to discuss here, and that's transferring effects from groups onto individual models, and we're going to transfer effects from groups into individual submodels. Um, both of them are rather similar, but getting to them and understanding, and this, is, this was a very simple concept in my head, but like I said, as I got into it, it became a little bit more uh, complex as I, I, I kind of dived into it. Um, so what I'm going to start with, I'm just going to say, let's imagine that we have a group of snowflakes, and uh, you've imported, let's say, the monthly sequence, and you see that there is one specific effect that does something really nice, and but it's a little over the top for you. Let's say you want to kick it down a notch. You don't want it all you know, blaring in that specific area. So what you can do is you can go into the sequence and you can find that one effect that really stands out that you really like. And you can either tone it down or you can punch it up by simply taking it off of, oops, oops, taking it off up here of the group level which is the group level of the snowflakes, you can double click the group to expand the group as you see here, and you can go and copy this effect and paste it in the exact same location, and you can do that across half of those snowflakes. So you, you can actually physically take the effect and copy and paste it and transpose it so that it's useful in on one snowflake or three snowflakes or five snowflakes instead of all 10, we'll say. Um, now, this is rather easy. It's easy to right-click, uh, select, right-click, copy, right-click, paste, and paste it on there. That's relatively easy. But then there, you also get into the other side of things, which is actually physically editing the effect. And there's a few things that you can do inside. Now, this isn't everything, because if I went through everything you could do with an effect, um, this would be a very long webinar. And so I'm going to kick this into uh, stick stick to three main things that you can do with the effect, and and of course some of these things are kind of tied to what the effect does, but for the most part these are the three different ways that you can enhance that effect and make it your own or be a little bit more custom with something. The first thing is is using the layer setting box or the layer setting box transformation drop down. And that's here on this side of the screen here you see we have a transformation box. You can click the down arrow and you can select a way to rotate the buffer. This little box here, just imagine that this is your snowflake in this box. And all you're doing is rotating the effect 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, or you're rotating it 180, or you're flipping it like a pancake 
left to right, or you're flipping it from bottom to top. So you have those ways that you can you can edit the buffer of that effect so it runs differently on that prop. So you can do that with the effect that you've copied and pasted. So another thing that you can also do to edit your effect is you can um, make changes to the effect settings. So this is this is the one probably most people will will be more inclined to try. So you, in this case, this this single strand effect here, it has a value curve on the chase size, so it goes from really small to really large as it travels the distance uh, of the duration of the effect. Uh, you can change the direction instead of using the buffer here. You can make it go from left to right. You can use the drop down here and go right to left, or you could have it. Uh, dual bounce uh, or change it in some other manner. Um, another thing that I didn't mention and I'll touch on quickly is the roto zoom tab. You can come in and you can uh, do roto zoom on uh, some effects to give it something interesting. Uh, doing that on, at a buffer level is really nice as well. Um, and, and another thing, the other thing that you could do is uh, using some sequence uh, some sequence have color specific palettes when i sequence i i come up with like a color palette and a lot of times i don't always use the same color palettes i use i build my own so it, recently i've done a lot of um searching as far as what colors look good together and the feel of the song and to try to match that feeling with the the music and so we come up with some custom color palettes and feel free to click on other effects throughout the sequence at the same time period, you can you can uh, select uh, a color palette uh, or an effect from the other effects, and you can utilize that color palette and apply it to this by using the control button and clicking on the effect and then clicking the update button, and it will update the color of those effects that you've placed on there. So just something for you to be aware of. Uh, these are just uh, a number of the ways that you can personalize things. Say you don't like the color blue, maybe you want more red. You can come in here and change the color of the props and you can bulk change them by selecting, clicking and dragging and then changing the color to red and then clicking the update button. So that, that might be something that you wanna do. Um, if, you're, if your props have submodels, this is a little bit more intricate. If you've, cre if, if you've created submodels for your props, then you know that they're in there. To activate those submodels, or not to activate them, but to open them up, you do the same thing in, uh, in this section down below where you split open the snowflakes. You can double click on, for example, this snowflake does have uh, some submodels and you're able to take advantage of copying the effect from up above in the snowflake group and placing it on the individual submodel group and you can utilize the submodel group not the submodel group that and this is a group here where it says uh, roof snowflake one tips uh, that is a group of submodels that are in there the same thing with where it says outer star and inner star it might only be one line you might just take this and put this instead of on the tips you might say oh it looks better on the outer star or maybe the inner star or maybe the middle star any one of those it might look just a little bit better over there instead of having it on every snowflake you could put it on just the individual submodels that you wanted to see on it so that's just one way of you to continue to edit the effects. But again, all you're doing is copying and pasting and to activate, it, not to activate, but to get into it, you just double click on the individual prop and it will open up and expand just like your groups did to show you your individual models. Now you're expanding to see your individual submodels. So remember, once again, uh, in, in the same instance, at this point, you can use you can change effect settings uh, to edit the effect to suit your needs. Keep in mind, though, it's a little bit different whenever you're working with submodels that um, that layer settings transformations, this rotate buffer, whenever you are using the single strand effect may not exactly work. You may need to change this render style to per preview in order for that to work visually on a rotation, let's say rotate 90 degrees, rotate 180 degrees, or flip horizontal. Uh, sometimes it depends on the effect, and this is something that as you get into editing your own effects, that as you do it, you get used to it and you learn what does what. So take your time with this kind of a step. It, it, it is, uh, once again, you can, uh, and obviously I didn't put the color palette up here, you can also change color palettes as well. 
uh, on these. So don't don't let this slide stop you from doing any other editing or possibly roto zoom, depending on the effect and the render style that you're using. Um, the other thing I think that is probably the most valuable thing that I could teach anybody is cascading. Um, we used to call this in in back back a long time ago with the other software with LOR, we called this uh, a chase effect C to go from one side uh, of an arch to another side to the other side of the arch. You chase the arch, and this is how you did it. We call it cascading, and this is done very simply. It's it, basically it's offsetting the effects so they are staggered at their start times. And this really can add, as you can see at the bottom of the screen here, you can see the different stages at which these effects are in a upward wash movement. I'm going to actually show you this as a demo when we get into X lights because it's a nice way to put a wash over top of all of your effects that fits that part of the music. And it's something that I honestly can't do because if you only have three mini trees or four mini trees and you try to import tree one two three and four to your mini tree one two three and four you're only going to get the first four but there are actually eight and it's spread over this specific long distance here so keep in mind this is one of the reasons again why we sequence at the group level and then you can take it to the next step by adding this in and doing that little bit of extra to make it really pop so how did how to physically do a cascade effect. Now we'll do this so that you can see it, but I'll walk you through the process. It's rather easy. Obviously you start by selecting and copying a desired effect. So I here in this screenshot, I've captured the effect and I've copied it. And on the next screen here, what we'll do is we'll literally copy and we'll paste it down below after we double clicked on the uh, mini trees and it opens up and expands and we see all of our trees. Now, uh, we'll talk about this more in a couple slides ahead, but uh, notice that all the trees are physically in order. Tree number one is on the left, tree number eight is on the right. I've already done that. If your trees aren't set up that way or if your snowflakes aren't set up that way, we can go in and fix that. And I'll show you that when we go uh, in the next few slides. But for game's sake, we've just pasted all of these effects here. And once they're pasted, then we'll go on to the next step, which is selecting all of the effects. We'll click and drag. And then after we've clicked and drag, we'll hover our mouse. And I'm, I, I hope hopefully you guys can see my mouse. You'll hover your mouse over here on the right hand bottom side and you'll hold the control key down now when you hold the control key down and you're hovering over here to the right hand side you want your mouse to turn into this double arrow and when it does I couldn't screen capture that so I tried but um, uh, I couldn't screen capture it but uh, if you can imagine your your mouse pointer changing to that double order uh, that double arrow you you can then hold the control key down and you can click and drag the bottom right either to the left or to the right and what that does is that creates this cascade. Now, in this example that you see here, eight is on the left. I'm sorry, eight is on the right. <coughs> Excuse me. Eight is on the right, and number one is on the left. And I cascaded it by moving it to the left. So now the first prop that gets the effect is going to be number eight. And the last prop to get the effect is number one. So you can see how this gives this nice little wash across all of these, which is impossible to do with any render style that we have currently in X Lights that allows us to do this. So this is something that you can only do manually. And this is the exact lesson that I want to want you guys to pull from today is that you can customize things and it's rather easy to do so. It doesn't have to be every effect in every prop in every group, but you can you can pick really specific areas and really focus on them and really make those look really good. Um, so another example of this might be if you have a snowflake tower. So if you or, or you have two snowflake towers. Uh, in this example here, you can see I have two. Uh, I have five snowflakes, one on each side, and you can see that the um, the top snowflake is the first one on the list, and the bottom snowflake is the last one. And the bars effect is chasing from the top of the snowflake here going downward. Now, is it is it particularly interesting? 
I just quickly did this so that I could do the screen capture, but it does give it this nice little addition. Now, you'll also notice that I took a second and I put a fade in and a fade out by 0.25 so that it, it appears to wash the whole way down and it fades in and then it fades out as it's doing it. So it gives it a rather interesting look. Um, is that something that you're going to do all the time? Maybe yes and maybe no, but it's a way for you to instantly and easily do this cascade chase over something that's vertical and as well as something that's horizontal. Um, again, the, the key to this is the location, order, and the group, how they are set up here. So if they're out of order, say say numbers, say you have number two and then number five and then number three and number four and number six and they're all out of order then they come on at random times or appear to have that randomness so that's what we're going to go look at now is how do we kind of fix that or make sure that we can put them in the correct order well it's rather simple the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over to the layout tab once you click on the layout tab you're going to find your group in the list and click on the group so in this example this is my mini tree group on the original layout and what I've done is I've already done this myself but this is what you'll want to do is you'll want to select the group then you'll want to click on a model as soon as you click on a model that activates these up and down buttons now you can use the click drag you can click on a uh, um, uh, the the physical uh, prop. Now I happen to know that the order of my mini trees here in this in this layout happens to be one through eight from left to right. Um, if if you have one through eight reversed here, let's say you start on the right and go right to left. Okay, just know the order and then put them in that order so that you know how they go, and that way you can set them up exactly to be one after another and then whenever you do this cascade effect it makes it much easier and a little bit more um, easier to flow through whenever you're creating the effects uh, it's also here's a hint it's also a good idea when you do create your groups to set this up ahead of time and if you do set this up once it's set up it's done so uh, one thing I can tell you, uh, just as a side note, the snowflakes in this in this group are not set up at all. Uh, they're just kind of helter skelter. Not that that's a bad thing, but uh, I don't individually sequence on on uh, the original layout, so um, I I never went through that. But what you could do is you could say from left to right, this would be the first one, this is the second one, this is the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and then the tenth was over here. So just be aware that you're able to go through your entire layout and put these all in that specific order to do that. You can do that also with your verticals on your house. You could do that with all your windows in your windows groups. You can do that with your icicles. Make sure your icicles, uh, imagine cascading all your icicles to have a chase effect over top of them. That would be a, a rather uh, dramatic look to it whenever you have a quick chase of some sort. And they all cascade where they have a delayed start, so, so to speak. Um, so if we did have that snowflake tower, this is kind of what I did to do the snowflake tower. And basically I created, I just created a snowflake tower on the left and a snowflake tower on the right. I said, hey, this one here is going to be my first one. So I, I created a group and I put them in, I put them all in one group. They're all in one group right now. But I selected the first one and I put diamond tip chroma flake 23 and it says number two. There's another one off the screen you don't see. But this is the first one in the order, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one. And that way, whenever you, s you flip back to that other page, you can see the physical order of those five snowflakes, which I can, which I can do. This would be the first one. This one was at the top, so this got the effect first. This one at the bottom is number five, which says number six, but it's the fifth in this group. And notice how it's split up between the two. I, I, can, I don't have to cascade over all of them. I can cascade one, one tower versus another tower because I've got them split, just like I said, into these two sides here and I have them lined up so that I can easily sequence them in that manner. So putting uh, the models into order in a group uh, is very important. Now the next thing I'm going to say is put models in order, um, put your groups in order uh, to transfer to the sequence tab. What this basically means is as soon as you change this here, you're getting from this screen here, it's automatically going to transpose over to here. So if you're back on this screen here, 
sequencing and you say, hey, this is going out of order, then just write down on a scratch piece of paper, hey, put number two in the number one position. Put number three in the number four position. Put number five in the correct. Just give them that ordered number position, and then you can come back over here and easily put them in order. And that quickly set your groups up to be nice and straight so that when you do this cascade, it creates it and it works brilliantly. So um, how about ordering of the submodels? Um, if you double click on that snowflake and you open it up, you'll notice that these are all the, uh, the submodels or submodel groups. Uh, in, a, in this example, these tips on this snowflake are in a group. They're stacked in the submodel. Uh, you can't change the order of them, but you can change their location physically here, and we'll do that exact same thing here as well. To, in order to change the group, uh, or I'm sorry, to order to change the order of the submodels, what you have to do is you have to click on the individual model. So the individual snowflake here, we're clicking on it. And once you do, you want to go to the submodels dialog and click click to edit. See how it says submodels here after you've selected this model. It says click to edit. It will activate the three dots here which will give you the dialog box. Once you click on those three dots it opens up this dialog box and these are your submodels that have already been created inside that snowflake. Now from this screen it's exactly the same as when we were on this screen here where you could put things in order. You can do the same thing here. You can put your submodels in order of the way that you want them. So, for example, see how these tips, this tip group here, whoops, sorry, this tip group here is stacked. It has a stacked group, but then there's also six individual tips where the individual tips are all on their own. So the, the stacked one has all six of them in them on different lines, whereas the individual tip one through six is each one individually. And that would allow you to cascade through those. Uh, then you have the outer ring, the inner ring, the star. So that would be kind of your star kind of effects that you could put on those. And then you also have your uh, main arms. Now that's a group or a stack of submodels. And then individually, you can individually sequence them uh, each one arm at a time so each arm would be all of its own that you could sequence and cascade between each individually and then finally you have a, a circle outer and a circle inner that you could use to sequence or uh, you know uh, utilize in that individual submodel programming as well but notice the order of this group here this the order that they are in here is exactly identically related to the submodels order whenever you go back to the sequence tab they're identically set up so if you move the tips from the top and you move them all the way to the bottom the tips will now be at the bottom on the submodel dialog that we were talking about right over here if you change it here that's going to change it here in your sequence editor for you. So if you need to make those changes, that's important for you to be able to find it. Now that's why, um, that's why this webinar is a little longer than I expected. But there's a lot more information in it to go into detail. Uh, I hear somebody went uh, unmuted. Does somebody have a question? Yeah. First slide. If I was in that screen, is it a drag and drop? Yes, it is. Both of these screens here, this is a, not this one, not this one, this is a sequence screen. But in the submodel dialog box, yes, this is click and drag. They did add that. And the same thing here, in this screen here, they made this click and drag. Now, if you don't like the click and drag, sometimes it feels a little wonky, especially when you're grabbing from up here and trying to put it on the very bottom. Then you have to grab the bottom one and slip it up to the next one up so it goes to the bottom. Or you can just physically click on these and use the green arrows to move them up and down if you don't want to do the click and drag. Maybe you're on a mount, um, on a on a laptop. I, 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 I'm getting better with newer laptops because they, they have multifunctions on them now, whereas the old laptops, I used one today and you can't there's no multifunction on it and it was much harder to use it so I understand if you're kind of stuck with an older laptop that it might be harder to do that that's why I always use a mouse um, so in that respect yeah the click and drag works but you also have these fine tune buttons the arrow up and down to move something once it's selected so that's a great question any other questions before I get into the demo I see John Spikers with us tonight good evening John I, and I was the one that interrupted you. Oh, you were a little, little, little fuzzy there. 
Let's see. Let's switch over to X lights as soon as I find out which one I'm going to. Not that one. I'm going to this one. There we go. Okay. So uh, we are in the original layout. Let's go ahead and reset this. And um, so this is this is the monthly sequence. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, have yourself a merry little Christmas. And I, I only want to work with specifically, and I, a lot of these are, are from the screenshots earlier that I did. Um, it isn't necessary to do this every single time, but it gives you a, a jump point. If you listen to the music and you hear certain things in the music, I think that's one of the most important things a sequencer can do. Whenever you're, if you really like a specific part in the song, then you can really enhance it by doing something like that, uh, like what we're about to do, that is rather simple, rather easy. And um, I'm going to. Uh, click and drag this out because what's nice about the original layout is these are some very high density mini trees um, I don't know why we did it back then but we thought they would be they look great and they do look great they show effects great but they're n never a mini tree that anybody's ever gonna have so um, I'm just gonna try and find an effect here that is rather short this one let's zoom in here and find one. So here, here's a perfect example of a drop down. And imagine how this might look as a cascade. So all I'm going to do to get into the get into the individual models that you see, double click on these, uh, the groups, any of the groups, and this should open up your uh, groups to your individual models. And then we'll right click, we'll copy, and then we'll go ahead and we will pay, uh, click and drag and paste out. You can see how now it's on the individual level. Uh, this is the model preview. I, if I open up the house preview, which is on the other side of the screen, and I come over here, let's zoom in, and I'll just focus on just the mini trees. So you see they're all doing the same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the original effect out. They're still going to look the same, but as you can see here, click and drag to select them all. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create that cascade. Now the cascade is if if you're if you're starting here at the top and you want it to cascade from left to right the left one is number 1 that's the first tree here on the left the last tree on the right if you want the last tree to get the effect last all you have to do is cascade it to the right so I'm going to hold the control key down I'm going to hover over top and see the double arrows pointing left and right we're just going to click and we're going to drag them slightly and if you go too far, remember a beat is only so far. If you go too far, it appears to go really slow. Now that might fit the music. It may not fit the music. Maybe you need it to be faster. You might have to shorten these up a little bit, so to speak, to make it make it appear faster, right? Or maybe you could maybe you could vary all of these. Maybe they could be just a little bit shorter. Uh, you can you can do that little bit of tweaking on your own. But listen or just look and see as um, adding that in just gives you something that's a little bit different, something that I really can't do easily that matches the number of props that you physically have in your display. So, and, and also you can see it all goes with the layering. Now the other thing I'm going to say is anything you put down here in this level on the individual prop, anything you put down here is going to override or go on top of the effects that are here at the group level. And you can see that because if you click on this effect, the purple, that's the color that's being cast, is going over top of the orange and the, and the red or the pink and the red. And the reason it is is because the lower the effect I or the lower the model is on this, excuse me, this prop level list here this the way the groups are set up the groups are at the top the individual models are at the bottom so this renders up first it's going to get the effect here and then it's going to overlay these as well on here um, I don't want to get too much and too heavy into render order but that's the basics of the render order so if you put something on the model level it's going to render on the model first and then it's going to render effects that are up on top of the groups so that's one example um, Another example that I would like to share is 
Um, let's go to the snowflakes. Um, now I, I didn't I didn't test everything that I'm about to show you, but uh, let's see what does this look like. Let's let's click on the snowflakes up here. Oh, this is whenever I made them make, look like trees. Um, so what does this do? Okay, so this is. I want to say this is a black effect. So that that that's a a mask that I have that movement going through there. That's not going to help us very much. Although it could help us. This is what we'll do. We'll try this. We'll copy this black effect here. This 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 is kind of a mask effect because I'm not using a color. A color is being overridden uh, because of the mask. Let's go to. Um, Snowflake number nine, because it has all of those cool things in it. What if we go to snowflake number nine and we place this on the arms? So here are the arms of the snowflake submodels. Let's go ahead and paste it. And there's six arms. We'll paste it on all of them. And then we're going to come up here and we're going to delete this. That way we don't have the overlapping. And... The other thing we're going to do is we're going to make this a little bit thicker so we have that works. So now you can see what happens whenever you take that effect and you have it going over top of all of those individual submodels as opposed to just placing it over top of the individual models. Um, Let's try another one. Let's go find another one, something a little more telling. This is a good one here. Here we go. So let's see this effect here. Uh, I'm going to center this over here. I'm going to move this over just a little bit and shorten it. So you see how that kind of sped up? Uh, this here, this utilizes some uh, rotations, and it, it actually has a, a couple different value curves on the rotations. Um, so if we take this and we copy this, and we just put this on, let's just put it on Snowflake. Let's, let's just put it on the Snowflakes. We don't even need to do it on the submodels. Um, Now you'll see how out of order these are. And then we select them all. We hold the alternate key down, and we go ahead and we stagger them the opposite way. You saw me do it one way. Now I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to move these all as a group, and I'm going to move it so that the bottom left one here, whatever order that is. And then um, let's go ahead and watch how these render, because we know that they're kind of... See how they're, uh, they're all activating at different times. And they're doing the same thing, but they're activating at different times. Let's say that's a little bit too much for your taste. You can always come in here and you can delete some of them. So now only some of them are going to light up. So that's just one way. Instead of them all doing the same thing, you can come in and individually um, work with these one by one. Now, if you wanted to come over here and put these in order, again, this would be snowflake number one. You could sit here and write these down. This is snowflake three should be at the top of the list of the snowflakes. So if we go to snowflakes here and we want snowflake three to be on the very left, we click and drag it and we can move it. Uh, this is snowflake two. Snowflake number four would be in the second position. So we can move that snowflake four. We can click and drag, or we can use these little arrow buttons to move them to where we want them, right? Uh, this would be number three. Um, that's uh, Snowflake 8. So Snowflake 8, we move it up to the number three position. This would be four. That's number seven. We go to number seven on the Snowflakes. Snowflake 7, that's number four. This is number five. See, so like I said, I didn't I, I didn't put these in order, and I I forgot. Was that number five? Huh. Uh, it was number nine. So number nine. I'm talking and doing this. So number nine goes up to the number five position. 
the number one is in the sixth position. The number one is in the sixth position. That's good. The number five is in the seventh. The eighth position is Snowflake 2. And that's where it should be. The ninth position is... Snowflake 6, Snowflake 6, and the 10th one would be the 10th one, so that's correct. So now if we come back here and we look at that, we just change this order. Look at how these are set up quite differently than they were before. And so now what we can come back and do, oops, what we can come back and do is we can copy and we can paste these and now if we cascade these we'll do it the other way so you can see it go from left to right we'll spread it out nice and even now it's going to render and watch these you'll see them they'll do that little spin across the whole So that is one way that you can go in, you can edit. Now, obviously, if you're doing the submodels, if you want the submodels, all of these are already in order. I don't have to go back in. But in order for you to do that, all you would have to do is select the snowflake. You would click on the submodel dialog, click the three dots. It would open up your submodel dialog editor. And here you could click and drag these and move these into any order. Now there's no fine-tuning click buttons to move it up and down that I know of yet. Maybe maybe Scott will write some fancy code. But you can see here how you can move things from one to another. Um, usually putting something on the bottom of the list doesn't usually work, but it does in this case inside the submodel dialog. So whoever wrote the click drag in this area did a good job. Um, but that's how you can change those. And once you make that change, that obviously this group here, this group layout setup, is then automatically converted over into this specific setup if we were to make a change. So um, I think... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Question. When you move these submodels around like this or move the order in the groups, you obviously save it and everything. Does that affect other sequences? Ab absolutely, it does affect every. It affects every sequence because now you fundamentally changed how XLight sees the models and where they're at. Once you change it in here, it's going across the board. Correct. Re render. Right. Yeah. So if you if you open up that and that's a good that's a great distinction, Larry, because. Um, if you have if you have things that you want to fix, but you like how it was in the past, and you don't want to change it, then you might have to double create models and create shadow models, and you would have a different set of models that you would sequence on them, and then it becomes a little bit more daunting, so to speak, because now you're adding a lot of extra stuff in just so that it looks a certain way. Um, but Typically, typically, when when your house is set up or whenever your layout, I don't want to say your house, when your layout is set up in a physical order, once you have it there, you typically don't change the order. So this is something that maybe if you do render a sequence, you might see changes in how things look. But you're again, you're just changing the order that they are in the group or the order that they are inside there. Now, if you don't do uh, any editing of effects of, of any sort, if you don't do this, you going in and changing this over here really isn't going to amount to much. It really shouldn't. There might be an instance or two how effects are, are jumped from one to another to another using the uh, per model uh, in the group. Um, here we go. The vertical and horizontal stack scaled and the horizontal or vertical stacked uh, render styles it might appear different but you probably won't even notice what that difference is if that makes sense so great question great question anybody else have a question on this while i'm here yes. hi Clyde. robert robert here hey robert how's it going good good Clyde. you were saying once you select the the uh the effect that you're pressing the control key and right clicking to get that 
Yes, that's correct. I'm 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 holding the control. So, for example, I'm I'm clicking and dragging. I've selected these. Now I'm going to press with my thumb the control key on my right hand because I'm left handed and I have the mouse. And I'm going to move the mouse over to here. I'm going to look for it to be that double arrow left right. I'm going to left click and oh, I didn't grab it. Let me try it again. <laughs> I'm going to grab it here and just. Is that locked? It better not be locked. Unlock. There we go. Huh. That doesn't want to. Doesn't want to do what I wanted to do. Yeah, because I, I was trying that just on, and I get it to to shift. We'll do it again. Paste. Maybe I found a bug. You never know. So click and drag. Hold the alternate key down, and then you should be able to move them. Oh. But it won't move until you get the double arrow. That's all. Okay, so it's the alternate key, not the control key. Yeah, the, the control key. The control key. Hold the control key down, wait for the double arrow, then click and drag. Okay, great. Thanks. Mm -hmm.